Greetings Earthlings, I'm back with another interface review for you guys. So today I'm reviewing this guy, the Behringer UMC22. If you are interested in this interface, it'll set you back around 40 bucks on Amazon, as per usual, link in the description. And for this video, I have the Rode NT1 connected directly to the interface with 48 volts phantom power turned on and the gain at around 45%. I will do no post processing to the audio, but I may boost it in post. So make sure to check the doobly do down below for more information. All right, guys let's go ahead and talk about what comes in the box. Obviously, you're going to get the interface. You get a USB cable. You get some documentation. And damn it to hell, you get another sticker. As far as the build quality, this thing feels a lot better than the Behringer UM2, which just had an all plastic construction. This thing has an all metal chassis. The XLR ports are not loose at all, but unfortunately the dials are loose and they wiggle around a little bit. The first thing you'll find on the front of the interface is an XLR combo jack, which allows for XLR or 6.3 millimeter slash quarter inch inputs. And for this channel, it does have a Midas preamp. Next, you'll find a 6.3 millimeter instrument input just to allow you to plug in a standard instrument cable. Then you'll find two gain dials with indicator lights directly next to them to let you know if you are getting a signal or if you are clipping. The first control is going to control the XLR combo jack and the second controls the instrument input. Then you have a direct monitor button to turn on or off zero latency monitoring. You have the output volume control which controls the headphone output as well as the main outs on the back of the interface. You have two more indicator lights to let you know if you're getting power or if the 48 volts phantom power is turned on. And lastly, you have a stereo 6.3 millimeter headphone output. The back of this thing is incredibly simple. You have a USB plug to connect it to your computer. You have a 48 volt phantom power on off switch to turn it on or off. And lastly, you have a set of 6.3 millimeter main outputs to go to your powered monitors. As with all Behringer products, it's pretty difficult to find any useful specifications about this thing, but I was able to find that this has a bit depth of 16 bit and a sampling rate up to 48 kilohertz. Obviously it has the 48 volts phantom power supply and that's pretty much all I can figure out about this thing. Now I do want to point out that since this is a two channel interface, if you only have the microphone plugged in and you don't do anything, audio will only come out of the left side of your headphones or the left speaker. A quick solution on the Mac is you go into your audio MIDI setup, you go to the interface and you change it from two channel to one channel and that should solve the problem. And if you're recording or streaming into something like OBS, if you go into the audio preferences, there's a setting to make the microphone input mono, which will solve that as well. So now you can see that my gain is set at around 45%. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that down to zero and slowly increase it so you can hear what kind of gain is generated by the Midas preamps in this guy. 25%. Seventy five per cent and one hundred per cent. Now I have the Sure SM7B connected directly to the interface with my gain at around 95%. And this should give you a good idea of how much gain this thing is able to offer and how clean said gain is. In terms of latency, here we are in Logic Pro, and you can see with an I.O. buffer size of 128 samples, we have a round trip latency of about 12 and a half milliseconds. If we drop this to 64 samples, we're looking at around nine and a half seconds. And if we bump it up to 256, we're looking at about 18 milliseconds. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a quick test showing you how the DI from a guitar with passive pickup sounds with an amp simulator, raw, and then in a mix.
So honestly, for 40 bucks, I think this thing is a lot better than it has any right to be. As far as pros, this thing is insanely cheap. It has a much better preamp than the Xenix and the UM2. It offers latency-free monitoring. The latency while recording is absolutely usable and actually pretty good. It offers nearly 48 volts of phantom power, which will power pretty much any condenser microphone, and the build quality is excellent. In terms of cons, the DI on this thing is just not that great. It maxes out at a bit depth of 16 bit and a sampling rate of 48 kilohertz. And I personally question the reliability of Behringer's budget gear because it does have a reputation of failure. But with all that being said, I think the UMC22 is still probably the best budget interface that I've tested so far. So if you're a YouTuber or a gamer who's on a super tight budget, who just needs a single XLR input with 48 volts phantom power, with the ability to listen back to your computer's playback, as well as hear your microphone in your headphones, then I 199% recommend this thing. I think this is probably a perfect option for you. But if you're looking to record something more professional and you're still on a super tight budget, I'd recommend checking out the 202 HD or the 204 HD because those record at higher bit depths and sampling rates. But if you're just doing YouTube, it really doesn't matter. I think this is perfectly fine because YouTube compresses the heck out of your audio anyways. All right, guys, that'll do it for today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, thumbs up. If you thought it sucked, a big bag of ding-dongs, thumbs down. If you want to influence the gear that I review next, head over to geeksrising.com slash podcastage. Cast your votes there. If you want more videos just like this, subscribe by clicking the logo directly beneath me. Follow me on all the social media stuff. Links at the bottom of the screen, and I will see you all on Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Bye.